Life on board Florence is not always sunny weather and easy days. This is the tale of a storm which drove us out of our anchorage to find shelter, only to find we were not alone in our new home. Whoa! Did you get that? I think I flinched. In the last four years since leaving England, we have crossed two oceans and sailed over halfway around the world. Our circumnavigation of the world is on pause in Indonesia, on the edge of the Indian Ocean, as we wait out the global pandemic. The restrictions here in West Sumatra, Indonesia are starting to ease, which means that we're coming to the end of our time here in Isolation Bay. But as we were looking back over the footage of the last few months, we realised that there was a story that we didn't share with you. So in order to tell that story, we need to rewind back to the first couple of months in Isolation Bay when we received an urgent call over the radio warning of, of some bad weather coming. We're leaving Isolation Bay for only the second time, not for a good reason. We heard on the radio from some boats that are up, that are using the internet up at Tello, that there is a really big storm coming through tonight, 40 knots sustained, and we would be on a lee shore where we were, there'd be big waves, um, and we just don't feel that it would be a safe place to be. So. It's just after lunchtime, we've got to motor up, it's only, only 12 miles, but because the wind's so strong against us and the waves, it's straight into the wind, so we can't sail, it takes too long to sail. We've got to try and motor, motoring straight into it, kind of managing about three to four knots. It's going to take us a while to get there. It's a pretty tough call because it's just a snippet of a forecast that we've got over VHF, so half of the boats have stayed in the anchorage, they're going to try and weather the storm there and then half of us have made a run for it and are, are going to try and find somewhere safer. Hopefully when we get there we'll find an anchorage that is more sheltered. According to the pilot book it should be more sheltered there, but in 40 knots you need quite a lot of shelter to be uh, calm and comfortable. At least hopefully it'll be safer than where we were. The weather started to deteriorate only 45 minutes after we'd left the anchorage. Increasing winds and driving rain. As the wind and waves increased, the autopilot was unable to cope, so we had to hand steer in 41 knot gusts. It was a struggle to keep the boat pointing in the right direction with the waves breaking and soaking us at the helm. We seriously thought about turning and running from the conditions. We would be able to sail downwind with the storm jib, but the next safe anchorage in that direction was 35 miles away, meaning we would be at sea overnight in very uncomfortable storm conditions. So we battled on, sometimes only making 0.8 knots upwind to shelter. We made it into the Lee of Sipica just before dusk, to an anchorage listed in the pilot guide for the area. As the weather eased slightly, this gave us just enough shelter to anchor for the night safely. But with worse weather forecasts from the northeast the following afternoon, we moved further into the mangroves the following morning for some more shelter. Well, boy, are we glad that we made the decision to motor up to this more sheltered anchorage through those terrible conditions yesterday. It's been pretty calm all morning here, 
but the forecast said that we were going to get hammered this afternoon at about four o'clock. It's just gone four o'clock and the wind has just gone straight up to 30 knots. Um, we're up here with half the fleet, so there's 10 boats sheltering at Isolation Bay. Five of us left the bay and decided to come and seek a better sheltered position a bit further north. And uh, one of those boats, Big Catamaran, as soon as the 30 knots hit, their anchor started dragging. So they're right now trying to deal with that and re-anchor in 30 knots of wind, which is pretty tricky. They're just on our starboard side now. Thankfully, the rest of us, our anchors seem to be holding. But yeah, it's going to be... It's going to be pretty uh, pretty windy. We're in a really nice shelter position. We've got mangroves all around us and the wind should be coming over the land to us with not very much fetch, not very, very much distance between us and the shore. So the waves should stay really small. So it shouldn't be too bad apart from getting blown around and skating around. But we really are worried about those that we left behind in Isolation Bay, the guys that decided to weather the storm down there. The weather files that we're seeing now show that this wind is going to carry on for a week being up to 40 knots um, and down there with this wind direction they will be having we think bigger much bigger waves than we're gonna have here can't do much about it now just got to hold on and wait for it to blow through so going into a night like this where we know it's going to be really windy through the night you pretty much know you're not going to get much sleep you might say that we'd be used to this by now, having lived on board for four years and we've been through 40 knots squalls and things before. And we are used to it, but that actually means on a boat we wake up at every change in the weather because you're all kind of tuned into any change. You go and check that uh, if you swung round the anchor's not dragged, it's reset, it's, it's all good. So quite often you're used to getting up in the night, but we don't sleep very well when it's like this. The boat's bouncing around. Wind's whistling through the rigging. So to prepare for something like this, we, we've got all the chain in the locker out. As a saying, there's no use in the locker. Doesn't do you any good, so it's all out. And that means that the anchor is less likely to drag. We also set the chart plotter to track our position so that we can easily, at a glance, check the chart plotter and see if we are dragging away from where we should be. So we set the chart plot so it records where we are. This is us, the little triangle here, and the blue track is where we've been swinging around as the wind blows us from side to side. But we know if we any, go anywhere down here, out of that arc, then the anchor is dragging. And that's a really easy visual way to see if the anchor's holding. But of course we might be asleep when it happens, so we also set an anchor alarm on the GPS down below at the chart table. So down here, at the chart table we've got our old school GPS here and on this one we can set just an alarm, an audible alarm, it's not actually that loud so when we've got that set and we're trying to use that to check on the anchor I actually sleep out here in the saloon rather than in the bow in the forepeak to make sure that I will hear that alarm if it goes off. However most of the time if you're dragging what happens is the boat will, as the boat drags it turns sideways onto the wind which means you then heel over a lot and that will wake me up probably before the anchor alarm goes off. We also make sure we've got a big spotlight ready in case we do need to move in the night, we need to see where the other boats are. And we also have the engine battery on and the key in the ignition, ready to just start the engine straight away if we need to motor up out of trouble if the anchor is dragging. Or another boat is dragging into us and we need to motor to one side even though we're still anchored. That's about all we can do to prepare and then you just got to try and sleep, which is not easy. darkness fell, we were still experiencing winds well over 30 knots, and 40 plus knots in the gusts. Although Florence's anchor was holding well, others were not so lucky. Dark now, but joint venture have been dragging anchor again and having struggling to re-anchor, so cruisers all stick together in these situations. One of the other boats is dropping their dinghy in, and I'm going to hop in with them and try and go and give them a hand. With a couple of extra people, we were able to re-anchor the boat with two anchors this time. So now it should hold. 
well here we are, it's just gone midnight, the wind is howling through the rigging, it is pretty loud, the whole boat is shaking every time we get hit by a gust, even though we're in completely flat water, no waves, we come to a really good spot for this, uh, every time a gust hits from the side it just heals the boat right over and we go skidding across the water around the anchor and then <laughs> the gust comes from the other side and we go back the other way. They just shake the whole rig and shake the whole boat. It is impossible to sleep like this. All storms will eventually pass and allow normal life to resume. Well, this is a bit different to the last couple of days. The bad weather's gone through. Everything's gone nice and calm and it's time to sail back down to Isolation Bay. Couldn't have a much better day for it. In here the water's pretty calm. I think it's still going to be a big leftover swell once we get out of these islands and into a little bit of open water before we get down to Isolation Bay. But we've got sort of 10 to 12 knots of wind, glorious sun, sparkling water. Kind of reminds us what we go sailing for. What do you think that island, Amy? It's gorgeous. Well, you can actually see it now, whereas on the way up here, it was enveloped in a rain cloud. Yeah. Lovely silhouettes of the palm trees. Gorgeous. Shame we can't go ashore. Yeah, not allowed to go ashore here. Pretty reefy. Not a really good anchorage close to that one, though. But we can go ashore when we get back down to Isolation Bay. Mm hmm. And say hello to Jack. Take him for a walk. Or you can take us for a walk. <laughs> we're actually starting to think of Isolation Bay as home these days. Feels like we're sailing home. Looking forward to seeing Jack? Yeah, I don't think Jack's missed me as much as I've missed him though. I don't know, if you bring him some food, he'll love you. For five minutes. We're back in our designated anchorage and there have been quite a few changes here whilst we're away. The, uh, the pier just behind me has been just half destroyed by the wave action and there is a huge amount of debris in the water. The bottom profile here under the water, the sand has changed completely so it's a lot shallower and some of the boats that were anchored there now can't anchor there because it's too shallow. So there's been some real big changes driven by the uh, forces of nature and those winds and waves that came through. We are really glad we weren't here for them. The boats that stayed here for the storm made it through okay, but said it was not a pleasant experience. Hey mate, what are you doing? Hey Jack! What are you doing, Jack? Killing in our dinghy. Nice to see you. Really gorgeous. Go in. It's nice to see you. Hello. Yeah. Nice to see you, mate. Good girl. We've just come ashore to feed the animals. The caretaker's not here at the moment, and um, we're the only. Well, there's only two boats in the bay. And unfortunately, this little one's mum has died. So she wasn't looking very well, but I've just given her some water and she appears to perked up a bit. But it's so hot today, I think like 40 degrees. We can't bury the pig because the ground is too, um, too shallow. We just go straight through to water. So I'm not entirely sure what we're gonna do about that. Um, but in the meantime, we need to give this one some energy because it's not looking well. Still half asleep. Not brilliant. Might be sick as well. She might be, but we'll do our best. Piglet. Hey Piglet. Just rode back to the ding. Oh, I just rode back to the boat to get some milk. And luckily we've had some trouble getting powdered milk for ourselves recently. So we actually ended up with some baby formula. 
I'm not sure if baby for me is a good thing or a bad thing. Oh, I think it's probably okay for him. Or her. Come on, little one. Good girl. So probably nice. put it down now. Drinking. Yeah, she is. She's clearly feeling better because she keeps trying to escape. So. Right. 2020 just continues to get stranger. Of all the problems we anticipated this year, yeah. building a bonfire to dispose of a dead pig on a remote island that had ended up being our home for the last four months was not one of them. Unfortunately, this little piglet didn't make it. It wasn't until later we found out that Indonesia, particularly Sumatra, has suffered from a severe case of African swine flu over the last few months, killing hundreds of thousands of pigs. To add to that, the island's chicks all got eaten by snakes or drowned. Not the ending we had hoped to have of our time on this beautiful island. It was a really sad time when we lost the pigs and the chicks on the island. But the storm that came in actually gave us a real positive because it allowed us to find this anchorage. Here in the mangroves we are sheltered from all directions so it's a really good anchorage and we're close enough to the town that we can get an internet signal for uploading videos by hoisting the phone up to the top of the mast. Now, there's nowhere to get ashore here, and when we told the food delivery guys that we were using this anchorage for the internet, they warned us not to swim here. It's been a rainy couple of days here in the mangroves, and I came up on deck to get the phone down from the top of the mast that we use as a Wi-Fi hotspot, when I spotted a couple of logs in the distance. And they looked really strange because it seemed like they were moving across the current. And when I looked through the binoculars, it was clear how they were moving and they were moving of their own accord. Months ago, when we were in the Banyak Islands, we had the remains of a large lizard coming knocking on the hull of Florence. And we thought that was a saltwater crocodile. But lots of the comments in the video actually told us that that people thought it was an Asian water monitor lizard and not a danger. So what do you think about these? We've had an awesome afternoon watching them swim back and forth in front of the boat. We don't really understand their behaviour. Yeah, can anyone tell us why they're swimming together like this? Are they courting? Or are they helping each other hunt? Or are they defending their territory? Whoa! Did you get that? I think I flinched. Not sure what that was. Each other. Oh. You can just see the power in their tail, can't you? Whoa! Oh. Oh. Can you get that on camera? I'm doing it. What's the other one doing? Nothing. Just turned around and came oh, back. Oh, lucky. What was he doing? The size and power of these creatures is awesome but I wouldn't want to be getting any closer than we have. Yeah, we won't be getting in the dinghy for a closer look. They must have passed in front of the boat about eight times before the rain stopped and we were able to launch the drone for a closer look. Yeah. 
We usually put an ND filter on the drone camera, but today we've swapped that for a polarising filter, which should cut down the reflections from the water and allow us to find a crock even if it is just below the surface. Searching the mangroves with a drone, we could only find one of them. And we're not sure if it's just the perspective, but it seemed smaller than the two that we saw swimming together. So perhaps there's three of them in the bay with us right now. And that is why this is no longer known as the Internet Anchorage, but instead called Crocodile Creek. Next time, our lockdown restrictions are finally eased and we can sail out to explore the local area. We'd like to thank everybody who supports the making of these videos, especially our star patrons. Thanks for watching, we really enjoy reading your comments and if you'd like to join the crew to support these videos you can follow the link to our Patreon site and don't forget to subscribe to make sure you catch the next one.